they didn't care. Steel band man, you have sticks in your pocket, you would be the subject of, of, of police harassment. At school, I had a lot of problems at school. And my principal, he was an Englishman, and he just couldn't understand why I would want to be involved with a steel band. Um, your parents didn't want you to play a band. You're going to even knock your fingers like even a stick playing something at home because they had it as a stigma to be a kind of bad and thing, you know, from the times with God. Really, it was something like that eh, because there used to have a lot of riot bands fighting against band and all this sort of thing, you know. Anytime somebody went to court and the prosecutor said, Your Honor, this is a band man, you know, this is a steel bands man. If he was getting three months, the magistrate would call him back and he was a band man and give him six months instead of three. Over people, then you say, warn the daughter to talk to no pan man because he used to say he's a vagabond, he's a bar john and as long as you're playing pan, he's a bar john. And you know, throughout my school career, you know, they used to call me John Pan. It was a, you know, so the pan had a little, you know, it was a derogatory term, John Pan, you know. But. They used to describe the steel band as a noisy instrument. The police representing this colonial state, that's the same state that denied these people opportunities for voting, for owning property, for social mobility, for employment for a decent standard of living. They didn't, they also tried to suppress the creative expression. You grew up in a situation where you had somebody being referred to as a bad John because he was a person who wasn't afraid of anybody, wasn't afraid of anything. And he was a defender. We always refer to them as the defenders of the pan. You know, the people who took to the pants, who, who loved it, who, who invented it and so on, they were, they were of a different, what do you call it, I don't know if it's social background or what have you. And the boat of pan really come from the ghetto, you know, so that had a stigma with it itself. Well, you have to remember these were gangs. These were boys and gangs in the barrack yards um, with nothing to do. Everybody was claiming they are tough, you know, well, uh, we have the best band, we have the best bands, we have the best tune, you know. And uh, people would get into fights because merely discussing the merits and the merits of the various bands. Why did they fight? Over stupid things. Women, you know, a pan. There was a pan that Ellie Minette made called the Barracuda. And Tokyo took it from them and hung it in the tree and said, you want to come for it. All the battles between steel bands began to take place with music. And I'm thinking that it is because of competitions like Panorama that most of the hostilities ebbed. Band culture existed when I came up in 1965. It wasn't prevalent. I, am, I know there were a couple of groups in Toronto, as far as I know. There's the one group at Queens. And beyond that, I'm not aware of many other groups. And because of the access now of Toronto, I can call Trinidad and say, I need a pan. Could you have one? And I can get one by Wednesday. I became involved with Steel Pan in Toronto through the schools. We had a, an arranger in Toronto who is well known. His name is Earl Lapierre Sr. And Earl Lapierre Sr. was given the opportunity to teach Pan in the Westview Centennial schools. And that's a secondary school level in Jane and Finch. And most of the kids in the Jane and Finch area were not uh, taking part in no programs in the school, like music or sports. And they were interested in the Pan. And the principal called me and said, would you like to start a steel band here? And from there, we started the steel band.
I am the one who already come and decide. Listen to me, this is virgin soil. No one is here doing this. No one had the idea. Or no, it did not a pan school in Japan at that time. Even Japanese, because you have a lot of Japanese teaching now. So it didn't, it didn't have that. Yeah. And Japanese people like uh, wind, wind sound, okay. also sea sound. Yeah. Japanese people very natural sound. Natural sound. In yeah. Nature, nature, nature sound. Yeah. So I think steel pan sounds is like that, yeah. like nature, nature sound. Yeah. So uh, I like Japanese people like pan very much. I think. So it's it's so it's spreading like in Trinidad. You know what I mean? You have they say like oh yeah, it's star leaf and then then they get. Phase two, and you know, it just keeps spreading like that. You know, what I mean, from one band, it, 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 it becomes different bands. The guy that actually brought Pan to New York was a gentleman by the name of Rudy King. You know, uh, he brought Pan to New York, to New York I, I think it was back in the 40s. And it was centered in Harlem. You know, they, they played at the Apollo and a lot of um, venues in, in, in Manhattan. It, I don't know the year it was brought to Brooklyn, but Brooklyn at some point became the centerpiece of Pan in New York. We always have to find a place to practice because in New York City, um, properties is not accessible like in other places. So if you practice at one spot this year, you're not guaranteed to get back that spot because they might have a house go up there. My main thing these days is to, you know, bring more younger crowd back in the steel band, especially for Panorama and stuff like that. Because to me, steel bands are not playing stuff that, you know, people my age will want to hear. So what are the criteria for Panorama? You have the arrangement, you have the performance, you have, that's how the players play, you have the tone of the instruments, how good the instruments sound, and how, how the rhythm is, the engine room. So it's spreading all over, and uh, we just need to make sure that we are able to maintain a share of the market.